Okay, everyone, we're back for part two. Uh, I talked in the uh, in part one, the overview kind of uh, showed what all these different parts um, are. Just get, get a little gist for what, what they're doing. But today I wanna to talk about the FCP input. Uh, so we can call it first person control or first person camera. Um, I'm gonna dive in here and we can look at not so many operators, but uh, I also wanna point out how some of these just kind of connect to other spots around the network. Uh, so I'm using this Xbox controller. Uh, and like I mentioned in part one, uh, I'm kind of cheating because I'm actually getting data in via the OSCN chop because uh, I'm recording on a Mac and you cannot connect to this controller uh, on a Mac. So I've got my PC laptop over there uh, that is just beaming the data over uh, into this OSCN for me. Uh, but all the data looks identical. Um, X and Y axis. We see here, goes the positive one to negative one on both sides. Um, Z axis is not available on the Xbox controller. Uh, X rotation, Y rotation, right there. Uh, we've got buttons, so A is button one, B is button two, X is button three, and Y is button four. Uh, and then B5 and B6 are these buttons on the top here. So also just kind of digital buttons. Uh, and then the kind of bumpers, um, sliders here, slider one and slider two, they are continuous values from zero to one. Uh, and then this P1X are these two buttons right here. So we got one negative one and then Y goes one and negative one there also. Uh, so these three buttons in the middle uh, do not transmit data um, via the joystick chop, so you cannot use those. Uh, if we look at some of the parameters, so even though I'm not connected to this joystick, we can look at some of the parameters here. Um, so we can choose which channels we have. So actually, I, I could just get rid of Z axis and Z rotation because we're not even using those, whatever. Uh, this axis dead zone, this is a nice, um, nice thing to play with. So essentially, um, it's talking about um, the, the movement from rest that you go to. So at point one, it's basically if you go 10% of the way from the, the resting point towards any direction, um, it will not do it. It'll be dead within that, that central zone. When you go beyond that, that's when you start getting values. So if you did something extreme, kind of like this, let's say, so for, for most of the time that you're actually pushing that control, nothing's gonna come through, but when you go beyond the dead zone, then then we'll get um, a value. So this will essentially kind of make a, a joystick into a uh, almost like a digital control. Um, if you go all the way to the left, then very, very minute movements will transmit data, uh, which for some people, maybe that, that that's kind of noise. So find, find the sweet spot uh, for whatever your application is. Um, and so, okay, so I built this little system, being able to switch between a joystick and a keyboard. Um, this is kind of a nice working tactic. Uh, a lot of times I was working on this, I didn't have the joystick with me or, or I was just on the Mac uh, without access to my PC. Um, so I've got this other keyboard input. So it's all basically coming into keyboard in chop, uh, all of the various um, keys that I have mapped to it. Uh, and I made this graphic in Illustrator, kind of showing all of that. And we can kind of see, so for instance, like, so this is standard for, for most games that use a keyboard. So W and S to move forward and back. Now let me go ahead and hit keyboard here. And let me make sure that's connected. Okay, cool. Forward, back, that's working. Um, but let's see just a little bit of the parsing that's required to do this. So when I hit KW, that goes from zero to one, right? When I hit S, um, initially that goes from zero to one also. Um, but both of these are determining a kind of, um, as far as our controller is concerned, it's called the Y axis. You know, that's once we apply that to our actual game, it's not gonna be Y axis anymore, but we don't care about that right now. So just in terms of controller, mindset, that's the y-axis. Um, so I need to send the s into a multiply here. It's just negative one. So when it s, it actually gives me a negative value on my y-axis. And then w gives me a positive value. Uh, also, you can see here, 
uh, using the keyboard if you're still in the editor um, can lead to some headaches because a lot of these keys are by default mapped to certain shortcuts within Touch Designer. So S being switching between the, the type of connections here. Um, if you're in perform mode, then you wouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, and then you know, just uh, an add here, kind of combining those together. So a, a lot of kind of parsing with all of those to get everything together. Uh, and I've got some some buttons here also. So T is kind of functioning like my my A button on the controller uh, because I was using A for something else. Okay, uh, and then with the joystick, it's it's easy to do kind of fine fine tuned movements. Just kind of hit the joystick a little bit. With the keyboard, it's all or nothing, right? So I built in this little slider, this vertical slider um, that is mapped to a math. And it's just taking all my keyboard values and multiplying it. So if I want to have a little more subtle control or slow down control, I can do that. Uh, and then that's going into a replace because uh, I'm not actually mapping a keyboard to all of these values, but just most of them. So it's replacing the ones that I have. Uh, and then switch. So it switches being selecting the keyboard data right now. Um, another select, uh, which is just for, for this FPC input, um, I just care about the things strictly talking about navigation. So all these other buttons that are doing things like uh, clicking signs or triggering menus, um, I, I'm not uh, grabbing that t towards my navigation system um, just yet. Um, I think I can grab that directly from the, the joystick chop in my UI stuff as needed. Um, and then this last math here is um, enabling a um, disable input. So this is where we can go over and look at the state manager again. Uh, and certain occasions, I'm going to hop out of here and let's go into state manager. So there's certain times when I want all of my controls to be disabled. Um, and I have a list here of when that happens. So I've got a cinematic, certain phases within stages of the game that are all controlled by the state manager here. Um, so all of these chops here, they're basically parsing, like are any of these conditions being met right now? If so, then this null 27 um, with the channel name disable input is gonna go from zero to one. Um, and that is what is uh, what I'm grabbing over in my FPC input over here. State manager null 27, great. Um, this is also kind of a, a point of using um, absolute references, uh, absolute paths versus relative paths. Um, another way I could have done this, which is a common way, uh, is maybe dot dot slash to go up a level. Um, with, with this sort of a thing, I like to use absolute paths a lot more because we can kind of see up here. So I'm inside FPC input container. If I go up a level, which is this root, I can click the root here and I can see all the different things in, in my root or I can just go up. So that can go up a level and then back down into state manager and then find null 27. Or uh, because they're both kind of together on that root level, instead of kind of going up and then down, I mean, to do that, I'll just go ahead and follow through with that state manager and then it was null 27 if I type that correctly. Okay, cool. So they got the same thing. Um, I find I find the relative um, reference to be more trouble than it's worth. So I usually like to have just go straight to my root level and then kind of drill down from there instead of kind of going up from where I'm at. That's just the way I like to do it. Uh, especially in, in times I have some things that are nested many, many containers deep, um, in which case it just becomes a big, big headache if you're using that relative um, path work. Um, okay, so that's that's about it. It's super easy. Um, just lastly, I'll just show, this is not necessarily about the input control, but um, I'm, I'm using this, I made this custom image in Illustrator. Uh, I knew my cont container was gonna be 400 by 400. And if we look here in my layout, 400 by 400. Um, and if we look back, I made a video a while back. Uh, if you look for UI um, UI content on my channel, uh, I talked a little bit more about this children tab. So I'm basically um, using some margins and aligning 
things like even with here with this look offset uh, so various things just to kind of give it a certain aesthetic um, that's all more more UI talk um, in, in this children tab here so okay that's that's good for now so next time we will look at so getting the the data from the controller Actually, let me go back to joystick here there you go okay data from the controller and we're gonna dive into FPC location control and we can see that is going to grab that data that we have input and we're going to parse it in lots of different ways and figure out how to um, transpose our coordinates. Okay, cool.